Hello everyone, Golden Nova here, and with the release of Photon Hypernova, we've got a lot to talk about. Last week we covered the theme that broke Ritual's Necroz, but it wasn't the developer's first foray into making that card type work. And, in an amazing piece of flavor, is actually the progenitor of Necroz themselves. While debuting in the first core set of the Xyz era, Generation Force, their true premiere happened about four months later in December of 2011, releasing in Hidden Arsenal 5, Steel Swarm Invasion, making them another member of the twisting, turning lore of the Dual Terminal. By drawing entities from other realms into their own bodies, they mutate into horrifying creatures of destruction, and in the game are known for doing quite a bit of hand destruction. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's look through the inductees of the Cult of the Fish, consider Ritual of our options, then find some potential supplicants that we can indoctrinate. It's time to whet our appetites with Gishki. But before we continue, a quick reminder to please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed my content so far. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers, and there's no better way to get there than on our Duel Runners. Our next stop is 40k, which means Leo and Luna Explained, where we'll be covering Ancient Fairy Dragon's Companions, the Power Tool Dragons, Morphtronics, and any other cards that are more than meets the eye. We've also got our Discord, where you might sometimes find that I put things in playlists that aren't supposed to be available yet and my Twitch, where you can watch me put all my lessons to the test live with viewer duels. And if you want to go that extra mile, join my Patreon, where you can get my videos early and help us reach these video milestones. Thank you all so much for watching, and now, back to the video. So, what's the deal with Gishkis? Well, they're a series of water attribute monsters that love ritual summoning, so they are very much like Necroz in that regard. However, these mackerels go about it in their own unique way. Many of our support cards will search our resources out of the deck like many good themes would do, but there's a bit of a sub-theme involving manipulating the top of our deck for some profitable excavating effects. As for our rituals, they also have a variety of effects, but a common theme is messing with your opponent's hand, either by getting to take a peek or ripping cards from it entirely. It also doesn't hurt that many of our rituals have big attack stats, so we can close out games while our opponent is emaciated. Let's begin with our support effect monsters, and first in line is Gishki Abyss, a level 2 fish monster with 800 attack and 500 defense, and when this card is summoned, you can add a Gishki monster with 1000 or less defense from your deck to your hand, except a copy of itself. This does preclude a small list of our monsters, but of the cards we can search, we've got some great targets. And because it triggers on any kind of summon, anything that can bring it out comes packaged with a little search. I'm glad to see that the Street Sharks are still finding some work, not a lot of 90s cartoon characters can say the same. Gishki Grim is a level 2 fish monster with 600 attack and 700 defense, and if you ritual summon exactly one water ritual monster with a card effect that requires the use of monsters, this card can be the entire requirement. And if this card is normal or special summoned, you can special summon a Gishki monster from your deck except a copy of itself. Also, you can't declare attacks for the rest of the turn except with ritual monsters. But this is, thankfully, the more lenient until the end of the turn templating. So you can perform your battle phase as usual, so long as you use this effect during main phase too. And on top of being a great way to summon all of our non-ritual Gishkis, including the aforementioned Abyss, it acts as a one-stop shop for ritual material, as it can be all the fodder you need for a water ritual summon. And since it can be used generically, this card makes for a great substitute for Shrit when making Necroz, though it's nowhere near as explosive. I'm telling you, if this is the kind of new support we can expect for Gishkis, their future doesn't look at all grim. Gishki Reliever is a level 2 Aqua Monster with 500 attack and 800 defense, and when this card is normal or flip summoned, you can target one other monster you control and return that target to the hand. But you must control another face-up Gishki monster to activate and resolve this effect. The idea is probably to recycle your Gishki monsters that have good on summon effects so you can get more out of them, but these effects are usually best when you're not wasting resources on them, and the normal summon is a pretty big one and you certainly can't rely on this thing staying alive for a whole turn so you can flip summon it. Heck, even just attacking into it will cause it to fizzle because it doesn't work on flip, just flip summon. Technically, it can be used to bounce any monster on your field, but at that point you need to normal summon a reliever after you already have a Gishki on field, and then also have another monster to target, and I don't think any hand trap is worth picking back up after doing all that work. 
but hey, it's a level 2 Aqua, so at least you have totally awesome? Gishki Vanity is a level 2 Aqua monster with 1000 attack and 800 defense, and during your main phase you can discard this card, and this turn, your opponent can't activate spells, traps, spell or trap effects, or monster card effects when a Gishki monster is ritual summoned, or when a Gishki spell card is activated. This means your opponent won't be able to activate hand traps, counter traps, or any other kind of interaction at you when you attempt to ritual summon, and has a nice benefit of keeping your opponent from triggering any on summon cards with this, namely cards like Torrential Tribute. The problem is that it covers way too little. For instance, the activation of the effects of your Gishki ritual monsters. While some do have their own on summon effects which will be protected by this, others have activated effects that don't fit into the timing, so it feels like a very half-baked piece of protection. At least Magical Meltdown gets you Alistair. I don't get it. People keep saying that Vanities is a problem card, but I don't see it. Gishki Vision is a level 2 Sea Serpent monster with 700 attack and 500 defense, and has the same effect as Grim, where you can use this as the entire ritual requirement for the ritual summon of a water ritual monster and you can discard this card to add a Gishki Ritual monster from your deck to your hand, making this the Necroz of Bryanak of Gishki, though since it can't add your non-rituals, it's got a teensy bit less reach. It's imperative that you see this card early and often, as it plays an integral role in getting you the cards you need, or making your ritual summons much easier, especially in conjunction with Gishki Shadow, a level 4 Sea Serpent monster with 1200 attack and 1000 defense that does basically the same thing as Vision, including being an entire ritual fodder for a ritual summon, but discards itself to search a Gishki ritual spell card instead of a ritual monster. So even when your game plan is overshadowed by your opponent, these cards will help you visualize your path to victory. Gishki Diviner is a level 3 Sea Serpent monster with 1200 attack and 800 defense, and once per turn you can declare a card name and reveal the top card of your deck, and if it's the declared card, add it to your hand. Otherwise, return it to the top of the deck. Now, this can grab you any card, not just Gishki ones. So while you can combo this with some of your own cards, if any off-theme effects have you stacking, uh, Plague Spreader Zombie and Edge of Sabers come to mind, Diviner can essentially just draw it back into your hand. That's the kind of power you get when you use a Magic Mirror to help with your divination spells, but let's be real, having the second pair of eyes probably helped. Gishki Ariel is a level 4 spellcaster flip monster with 1000 attack and 1800 defense, and when flipped, you can add a Gishki monster from your deck to your hand. It doesn't delineate between ritual or non-ritual, so this gives you access to your entire monster base, even other copies of itself. But being a flip monster means that this card is horrifically slow, so until we get something on theme that helps with this, we're not exactly going to be flipping out about this effect. Gishki Avance is a level 4 spellcaster monster with 1500 attack and 800 defense, and once per turn you can choose a Gishki monster from your deck and place it on top of your deck. This works very well with any draw effects you might have on hand, and of course, is the perfect setup for Diviner. So it's got a pretty good track record of setting up all your plays in advance. Gishki Beast is a level 4 beast monster with 1500 attack and 1300 defense, and when this card is normal summoned, you can target a level 4 or lower Gishki monster in your grave and special summon it in face-up defense position. This doesn't exclude itself, so it's a great setup for rank 4s, but in regards to our own theme, it can bring back Abyss to get a search, Grim for a summon, and either Vision or Shadow to help with ritual summoning, because it does not negate the effects of the summoned monster. And of course, there's all that link potential. My question is though, if you're going to give this monster an eastern dragon face right down to the little whiskers, then why would you make this a beast? Gishki Chain is a level 4 Sea Serpent monster with 1800 attack and 1000 defense, and if this card is normal summoned, you can look at the top 3 cards of your deck, reveal a ritual monster or ritual spell from among them, and add it to your hand. Also after that, place any remaining cards on the bottom of your deck in any order. So it's basically worse Manju that works with you on all of your on-theme cards. At the very least, it has the good graces to add any ritual monster or spell to help grab anything you splash in, but it sucks that it only works on normal summon, so grim combos are right out. Despite that, this is one of our best normal summons that we can resolve, and we really hope our opponent doesn't chain anything to it. Gishki Amelia is a level 4 spellcaster spirit monster, we are really getting into the funky stuff, with 1600 attack and 800 defense, following all the usual spirit rules. And when this card is normal or flipped face up, negate all trap card effects on the field until the end phase, but you must control another face up Gishki monster to activate and resolve this effect. 
So, hey, because Amelia is a spirit, you can proc their effect every turn. It also doesn't say negate all trap cards currently on the field, so you can prevent any reactive battle traps that crop up later in the turn. Now, this does stop your own trap cards, but this just means you can shut off any floodgates that you have, like Summon Limit, so you get to use them as you see fit, while your opponent will have to play under them. So hey, even when you're dead, you can still help out the organization helmed by your mother, who betrayed and killed you while being possessed by an evil spirit. Yay! Gishki Natalia is also a level 4 spellcaster spirit monster, this time with 1800 attack and 900 defense, and when this card is normal summoned or flipped face up, you can target a Gishki monster in your grave and return that target to the top of the deck. So where Avance can pull cards still left in the tank up to the top of your deck, Natalia is a weird kind of recovery, taking a grave card and putting it on top of your deck to get it back with Diviner, or just by drawing it. And because they're a spirit, you can do this every turn. This is another card that takes up your normal summon, which we already have a lot of, but it is nice recovery, so it'll either be good or bad, depending on your judgment. Gishki Marker is a level 4 Aqua Monster with 1600 attack and 1200 defense, and when this card is summoned, you can target a Gishki Ritual Monster or Ritual Spell card in your grave and add that target to your hand. This makes for a good way to recover your resources, and because this triggers on any summon, it's another good target for Grim. Not to mention it also has some great levels for our ritual summoning. I knew weaponizing Octo Dad would pay off someday. Gishki Mollusk is a level 4 Aqua Monster with 1700 attack and 900 defense, and when this card is sent to the grave by a card effect, look at the top 3 cards of your deck, then return them all to the top or the bottom of your deck in any order. Calm down, it does say when, but the effect is mandatory, so it'll still work when used as ritual fodder. It's also another useful way to help control the top of your deck, and take any bricks or garnets and put them under your deck so you don't have to see them again. Though you'll have to be careful it doesn't take any of those cards for itself. As a mollusk, it can be quite shellfish. Gishki Noelia is a level 4 spellcaster monster with 1700 attack and 1000 defense, and when this card is normal summoned, you can excavate the top 5 cards of your deck, and send any excavated ritual spell cards and Gishki monsters to the grave, also place the other cards on the bottom of your deck in any order. That's a lot of potential mills, and thankfully our ritual spells have some nice grave effects. And with Salvage, we can scoop up a lot of the cards you end up milling but I wouldn't expect anything else from one of the biggest MILFs in the entire game, which in this instance stands for Mage Instigating Lies and Fraud. Alright, that's our effect monsters, now it's time for our fiendishly flesh warped rituals, and we're starting with a… uh, fiend. Gishki Cyclone is a level 4 fiend monster with 2150 attack and 1650 defense, and once per turn you can declare a monster type and attribute, and on resolution, look at a random card in your opponent's hand. And if it's a monster with the declared type and attribute, shuffle it into the deck. Otherwise, return it to the hand. It's cool that you can get a free peek every turn, but unless your opponent's been narrowed down to like a single card, don't expect to actually make the rip unless they're on a mono type and attribute deck. You can also try and fiend for a hand trap by saying, oh, uh, light rock or fire zombie. And once it's properly summoned, you can revive this with beast, because unlike Necroz, our rituals can be revived. There's a lot to like here, but for the investment of a ritual monster, it may not be enough. Ugh, evil swarms, ruining everything again. Evagishki Gust Kraken is a level 6 aqua monster with 2400 attack and 1000 defense, uh, monarch stats? And when this card is ritual summoned, you can look at up to two random cards in your opponent's hand and shuffle one of them into the deck. Now we're talking here. Whole strategies have been built around summoning as many Gus Krakens in a single turn to decimate your opponent's hand, and because it doesn't discard, you don't risk any grave triggers activating. Now, this does trigger specifically on Ritual Summon, so you can't just reborn this and give your opponent a minus one, but with the right sequencing, you can loop through material to put your opponent at a severe disadvantage. Trust me, this card is Krakened. Evagishki Mind August is a level 6 Aqua Monster with 2500 attack and 2000 defense, and when this card is Ritual Summoned, you can target up to 5 cards in any graves and shuffle them into the deck. Now, that might seem like a pretty innocuous effect, but it is a form of graveyard hate. Shuffling cards out of your opponent's grave so they can't use them, while getting back your most important cards. And when you're looking to gust crack and loop your opponent, sometimes you need to put cards back into your deck that you can search. Heck, it can even get you back powerful limited cards like Harpy's Feather Duster on the off chance you draw into them again to nuke your opponent's back row. 
and being level 6 means it already lines up with Gust Kraken's level, making them perfect fodder for one another's summon. Eventually, they'll turn into a fusion monster once the Shadal show up, turning August into Ap Cologne, but that wouldn't be the first time they brushed up against evil spirit possession, so I don't think they mind. Evagishki Tetroger is a level 6 aqua monster with 2600 attack and 2100 defense, and once per turn you can declare a card type, monster, spell, or trap. On resolution, your opponent can discard a card to negate the effect, otherwise both players send a card of the declared type from their main deck to the grave. Now, calling monsters is bound to get you in trouble unless you've got a huge blowout ready, but spells and traps are going to be a bit more negotiable, depending on who you're dueling. Calling spells, for instance, is a great way to get your ritual spells into the grave, but against metal foes, you might want to find a different strategy. But regardless, you are handing your opponent a discard outlet every time you activate this, and since they get to choose, every danger in their hand is instantly live. If you're playing this when the new Dark World Structure deck comes out, you're losing the game on the spot. And if they're playing BA, PK, Tier, or even Skullmark frickin' Ladybug, you are never going to live it down. Tetra may mean 4, but that does doesn't mean it's a card for you. Evagishki Levianima is a level 8 aqua monster with 2700 attack and 1500 defense, and when this card declares an attack, draw a card. And if you do, reveal it, then if it's a Gishki monster, look at a random card in your opponent's hand. Hey, it's a free draw on attack. If this was just slightly easier to summon, I'd be all for this. For now, it's a... Uh, eh? I mean, if you need a level 8 to push for damage, I know way worse options, and if you're lucky, you get a little extra knowledge, so that helps, especially with Cyclone. Though to be fair, helping Noelia in any way is deplorable by default, no matter how many draws you can levy with it. Evagishki's Soul Ogre is a level 8 aqua monster with 2800 attack and defense, and once per turn you can discard a Gishki monster to target a face-up card your opponent controls and shuffle that target into the deck. Damn, I wish this didn't have a discard, but it's still pretty cool. Any face-up card gets spun back into the deck for a single discard, attached to a 2800 point body. It even kind of synergizes with Levianima, because it can potentially draw you into a Gishki monster that you can then pitch. And they're both level 8, so then you can access all of those Xyz monsters. But you've really got to stop messing around in their swamp, come on. Gishki Zeal Gigas is a level 10 aqua monster with 3200 attack and 0 defense, and once per turn you can pay a thousand life points to draw a card, and if you do, reveal it, then if it was a Gishki monster, shuffle a card from the field into the deck. Now this card is wild! Each turn you get a draw, and it's a potential spin back into the deck. Of any card, face up, Face down, yours, your opponent's, everything on the field is a viable target. It can hit in for a ton of damage, and to top it all off, it's level 10. That's right, throw a couple of these on board and you've got a ticket to the OTK station with our good old friend Gustav Max, with an optional Liba upgrade at no charge. Rituals can be pretty cool, but it's cards like this that give me a real zeal for ritual summoning. Evagishki Norenamas is a level 10 spellcaster monster with 3000 attack and 1800 defense, and if this card is ritual summoned, you can target a water monster in your grave and special summon it. Just any water monster, no big deal. Noramanas can't be destroyed by battle with any monster special summon from the extra deck. A little bit of Ap Cologne foreshadowing there with some Necroz sprinkled in there with that extra deck hate. And once per turn when your opponent activates a monster effect as a quick effect, you can return a Gishki ritual monster you control to the hand, and if you do, shuffle that negated card into the deck. That's what I love about legacy support, sometimes you just get a free negate, but I'm sure as heck not complaining. Especially because you could summon a Zeal Gigas, use its effect to draw a card, potentially spin a card, then use it as ritual material for an Arena Moss, at which point you can revive the Zeal Gigas to use its effect again because this theme's ritual monsters are just allergic to hard ones per turns. Then you can bounce this big ol' fish for a negate, so the next time you ritual summon, you can revive from the grave again. And don't think I forgot about the rank 10 train option. This just proves that, objectively, narwhals are the best sea animal, icicle horn and all. Oh, what, we've also gotten Xyz monster? for lore reasons, so we'll just cover them right here. Evagishki Merogeist, a rank 4 aqua monster with 2100 attack and 1600 defense, requiring any two level 4 monsters as material. After damage calculation, if this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can detach an Xyz material from this card to shuffle the destroyed monster into the deck instead of sending it to the grave. Neat little trick to avoid graveyard triggers, but could it stand to have a few more attack points? Uh, floating monsters tend to have low stats, sure, but it's gotta be able to put up a fight against bigger threats so it doesn't just get picked off. That's another common Geist L right here. 
Alright, that's all the monsters, now it's time for the spells and traps, and that means it's ritual spell time! And just to get this out of the way, all of them can be used to ritual summon any Gishki ritual monster. First is Gishki Aquamir, a ritual spell, and you must tribute monsters whose total levels equal the level of the ritual monster you ritual summon. And while in the grave, you can shuffle this card from your grave into the deck to target a Gishki ritual monster in your grave and return it to your hand. Now, none of our rituals have the same kind of in-hand utility as the Necroz, so it's nice that Aquamir can effectively storm monsters in the grave, cashing one out into your hand when needed. I'd warn you to keep a lookout for breaking it since busting a mirror causes you bad luck, but uh, just read the lore. Bad luck has already come to town, moved in, kicked you out, unsealed your ice dragons, and got your mom infested with a cognato virus that wants you to unleash the power of negativity onto the world. Gishki Photomir is a ritual spell card that just ritual summons any of your on-theme ritual monsters from your hand onto the field, no tributes required. Instead, you pay life points equal to the level of the monster you ritual summon times 500 when this card resolves. Which means we're in a weird place where you pay life points as an effect. So uh, I guess we have to go after Sioux ships now for copyright infringement? Anyway, now you have a way to just plop rituals onto the field without having to use any monsters, but by goodness is this expensive. Even our cheapest summon in Cyclone will cost us 2k, with it getting as high as 5k for monsters like Zealgigas or Naranamas. And that's going to be on top of the life points you're already going to be paying for your other effects. And unfortunately, there are a lot of ways to reduce the level of monsters in your hand to help you lower the admission cost. You're also not getting any kind of grave effect with this, so unless you're playing some kind of mad scientist arrow mage build to get your life points back, this card is anything but picture perfect. And if you do have an arrow mage Gishki build, you better be sharing it. Forbidden Arts of the Gishki is a ritual spell card that tributes face-up monsters from anywhere on the field whose total levels equal the level of the ritual monster you want to ritual summon. That monster's attack is halved, and you can't conduct your battle phase the turn you activate this card. Now, this restriction is less amenable, as it doesn't say, for the rest of the turn. So if you're going to use this, you better be okay with only dealing burn damage that turn. Aside from that, this card is, uh, fine. Like, it does use your opponent's monsters, which is really cool, but we're still under the exact level conditions, so if your opponent doesn't have any appropriate monster, you're not getting any value. Thankfully, our level 8s are here to tribute over big synchros like Borlode Savage Dragon, on top of being able to use Barone or Sword Soul Sovereign to make our level 10s, as long as our opponent doesn't read our cards and then promptly negate them. And because this counts as a proper ritual summon, you can send the monster to the grave and revive it later to get their full power. But good luck trying to play this in advanced format since this card is forbidden. Gishki Ice Mirror is a ritual spell, and you must either tribute a face-up monster your opponent controls, or monsters from your hand or field whose levels equal exactly the level of the ritual monster you want a ritual summon. And if you do, lose life points equal to the summoned monster's original attack. If this card is in your grave, you can target a Gishki monster in your grave and place it on top of your deck, and if you do, place this card on the bottom of your deck. This reads like a fixed version of Forbidden Arts, not gonna lie. You don't skip your battle phase, you still get to use one of your opponent's monsters, and it doesn't even care about levels! That's right, it only checks for exact levels if you use your own monsters, which is positively outrageous. And even at the absolute worst life loss, it's still better than what you would pay for Photo mirror. It even has a grave recycling effect like Aqua Mirror in a way that guarantees you get the bonus effect of Levi Anima and Zeal Gigas. This card is absolutely busted, and every Gishki build moving forward is going to be leveraging this to its full potential. This must be a frosty because this is one heck of a treat. Aqua Mirror Focalization is a normal spell card that adds any Gishki monster from your deck to your hand, and during the end phase, if you control a Water Ritual monster, you can banish this card from your grave to set an Aqua Mirror Spell or Trap card from your deck or grave to the field, except a copy of itself. Now, while you can only use that effect once per turn, the search is not, meaning this is a rota you can use multiple times in a turn with upside. And because one of the cards you can search is Shadow, that means every ritual spell in your theme is searchable as well. And while we've only seen a single Aqua Mirror card so far, the base ritual spell, we've got a few cards coming up that are a lot better now that you can pull them from basically anywhere. Once again, another huge piece of support for the theme, and is a major focal point of the deck moving forward. Contact with the Aqua Mirror is a normal spell card that you can only activate if you control a face-up water monster to activate one of two effects. 
but if you control a water ritual monster, you can activate both. First is you can look at all set cards in your opponent's spell and trap zone, or look at the top two cards of either player's deck and return them to the top in any order. So you get to learn a lot of hidden information, and can even do a little bit to mess with your opponent's top deck. Finding out what devious cards your opponent has set up for you can also turn the tide of battle, though it'll depend on if your opponent is even running back row. I love getting information like this as additional effects, but as its own card, I'm not sold. Glad to see we can access this with focalization, but if given the choice, I wouldn't put an effort in contacting this anytime soon. Aquamirror Cycle is a normal trap card that targets a water monster you control and two water monsters in your grave. You shuffle the first target into the deck, and if you do, add the second targets to your hand. So hey, a two for two. You lose the trap and the monster to get back two monsters. And if you shuffle back anything like Abyss or Grim, you're actually not too upset. They don't do much more while on the field, so being used to recover more resources is grand. Heck, you can even use this to dodge targeted interaction if you so choose. And Amelia would go on to use their experience from this cycle to craft the Necroz cycle, which means I can't make the full circle joke because I've already done it. So I'll have to find something with a little more edge. Aquamir Illusion is a normal trap card that special summons a Gishki Ritual monster from your hand. It can't attack, and is returned to the hand during the end phase. Now, I presume this bypasses summoning conditions, but keep in mind that this is a special summon, not a ritual summon, so you won't get any on summon effects like Gust Kraken. However, you can use Zeal Gigas and Soul Ogre, and before the end of the turn, you can use them as material for those big Xyz monsters or Lynx. So much for being an illusion, the body horror seems real enough to me. Aquamira Meditation is a normal trap card that has you revealing a ritual spell card in your hand to target two Gishki monsters in your grave and return them to the hand. Like Cycle, you can get back some pretty nifty cards with this, getting more uses out of Shadow and Vision, as well as a powerful summon from Grim. Not to mention setting up the ritual summon of your next ritual monster. I'm not sure why you get to reveal a generic ritual spell to get back specifically Gishki monsters, so it's something I'll have to sit and think on. Ooh, maybe with some nice background music and a scented candle. Alright, that's all the Gishki cards, but what do we do with them? Well, it's hard to shake our combo identity, but with so many hand traps and interruptions floating around in the game now, Gust Crack and Hand Loop should be seen as an incidental bonus to a more straightforward game plan. We can either try to deplete resources going first, or use our opponent's monsters against them going second. So we should aim for an aggro strategy, leveraging some outside control elements to keep our opponent in check, with the ability to OTK out of nowhere once the shields are down. But what can we play to help them out? As mentioned previously, part of the problem with using Forbidden Arts is accounting for different levels, not to mention that Xyz and Link monsters are totally immune. That's why you're gonna want to spring for some Kaijus. They have a ton of level 8s and a 10, which are perfect matches for our level 8s and 10s. Not to mention that this is an easy out to unaffected boss monsters, or even ones that are either hard to deal with or have negation built in. Then, you can either tribute those kaijus or your opponent's other monsters for your rituals and go to town. Plus, you get to run interrupted kaiju slumber. As for generic support, we've got plenty. As mentioned previously, Salvage can grab back Vision, Shadow, Grim, Abyss, as well as Beast, all of which make for great play starters. And in a pinch, you can even scoop up Vanity so you can use its effect to make your rituals a little safer. You can also play Surface, which doesn't get as many targets, but does summon Abyss and Grim for their effects. But White Mirror might be even better. It summons fish only, so Vision and Shadow are right out, but Mirror gets you another copy of the summoned card for follow-up plays. And since Abyss isn't once per turn, you could even leverage that card immediately, should you have the normal summon. Let's also not forget that we're talking about a bunch of level 2 monsters, so while Gigantic is a little outside our usage range, Elf fits right in. Other good cards include Butuniful Princess, which is basically more copies of Grim and Abyss. It being banished means you can't use support cards to recycle it, but it does mean you can run OH FISH! Not only is it more monster negation, you get to yell OH FISH whenever you activate it. That's what the exclamation point in the name is for. And if you want more ways to ensure you have banished monsters to fulfill its requirements, try out Moray of Avarice. This gives you a bit more draw power, and if you don't have a way to get one of your tiny fish off the field after you've gone full combo and want to avoid taking a ton of damage, this is a good outlet for it. Fury of Karyushin is a banger, giving you access to a board wipe and torrential tribute, and because of this card's grave effect can be one-sided. Absolutely brilliant. 
Ice Barrier also makes for some good water support as it blanks a monster on activation and is effectively a search effect that bends your big rituals, which isn't actually a problem considering how well we can operate the grave. We mentioned Star-Crossed Meeting in Necroz, and while that card was a bit of a mismatch there, it's much better here since we already have plenty of ritual monsters with the same level. It's also even better here because we can use it to mimic Forbidden Arts or Ice Mirror, making this quick effect removal that doesn't target. How silly. Oh, and yeah, using Ritual Staples apply here. Manju is a great normal summon, and Preparation of Rites can recycle your Ritual spells while getting you anything from Gust Kraken and below, with Pre-Prep being out of reach since none of our Ritual spells specifically name any Ritual monsters. Supplementing our strategy with the Shark Xyz cards could also yield some amazing benefits. While a lot of them concern themselves with level 3, 4, and 5 fish monsters, thus keeping Grim and Abyss out of contention, they're all still waters, and very few cards lock us out of anything outside that. Abyss Shark is an amazing outlet that can leverage a number of shark cards to access rank 4 and 5s. The rank 4 pool includes Abyss Dweller, which in our deck is Grave Disruption and an incredible attack boost, Stealth Kragen for some amazing field control, and Bahamut Shark to give us access to Totally Awesome if we don't want to hard make it with our level 2 aquas, while rank 5s open up the Silent Honor and Nash Knight lines. Heck, Silent Honor arc has a life point gain effect to counterbalance the ones you'll be paying. And if you can spare it, overlay full armored Crystal Zero Lancer on top of that, which can skill drain all of your opponent's monsters for the turn, which is fantastic. As for a silly tech pick, try splashing in the Ruin and Demise cards. Notable interactions include the field spell, Breaking of the World, which can make a ritual monster in your hand match the level of a ritual monster you control. So while Photomir will still cost you an arm and a leg, by making Zeal Gigas a level 4, it'll cost a lot less. Or just make it easier to summon using our other ritual spells. Also, Demise, Supreme King of Armageddon, is a huge board wipe and is free as long as you only ritual summon it using ritual monsters. And thankfully, we're chock full of really good ones that are supremely searchable. Throw this Demise and a Zeal Gigas onto the board at the same time, and you're liable to close the game out in no time. And that's all I have to say about Gishki. This deck is actually pretty cool, especially now that modern cards have helped smooth out some of this theme's rougher edges. We still have a long way to go, but now that we've got search capabilities on par with our younger sibling, we may yet find a way to overcome the threat of the metagame with creatures powerful enough to drown out the competition. But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Are Gishki the higher power we all were hoping for, or are they still a little fishy? Let me know in the comments, and if you haven't already, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to share your support, ring that bell so you don't miss an episode, and share this video with someone you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh! It really does a lot to help me out. Today's episode was brought to you by my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commander Harry, the ominous benefactor, Nebula Navigators, Third Dynasty, Adam Zagidel, Avi Chali, Kane Senpai, Cameron Berg, Corbinisms, Cozy Boat 275, Eric, Frankie, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh, Gloomba 331, Great Big Pillock, Ironic, John Manji, Julius Sneezer, Larakia, Mana Charge, Marluxia's Girl, Meteornis, Michael Madsen, Mighty Action X, Muziki Clark, Neo Trinity, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, Rem T. Bright, RJ the Jank Monarch, Ruxith Sarani, Sophie, apparently, The Fresh Prince of Conair, The Wizard Moose, True Neutral, Xander Wolfensberger and Zyrus, Cosmic Crusaders, Bear Shark to Puss Studios, Chaz Ghost, Chris Kessler, Emony, Eva Padilla, Howling Zangetsu, In Blink, Jesus Garcia, KL, Kale the Dragon, King Scarlet Yu Gi Oh!, Lord Whoop De Doo, Manga Pages, Marion James E. Picotta, Nitromo, Sarah Los Lushi, Shaquille Solomon, Shooting Star 3300, Star Lord 777, Tucker Ordorn, and the Legendary Raven, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. I'm only able to continue doing this thanks to the support of these lovely people, so if you'd like to be a part of these credits, as well as help me in my journey to cover all of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s archetypes, please check out my YouTube membership or Patreon links in the description to see if I have anything you'd like on offer. And if you would like to see another video about water ritual monsters, check out this video all about Necroz. And if you want to see two YouTubers going at it, check out Noah Jenk and I's latest series progression polls, where your voice shapes the format. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye